Hey, I talked earlier this winter about building a, a wood box. And I'm, I'm started on that now. That's the one by ash boards that I was cutting. When he was those, you know, made out of the firewood uh, the surplus or the salvageable. So I've got a pile of them. But the thing about them, those particular trees were really knotty. Well, okay, I can live with some knots. But I'm, I'm picking through and finding the best for certain places. But I got this one. You know, okay, the, the design of the thing is going to be so that I can haul, load it with a sled load or like a sled and a half is my thought. So I really, I do need to go about this wide, which is, you know, if I can go 28 probably would be a good width. You know, you don't want it to stick out too far out in the room. That length it can be a little shorter because it's going to be quite a little deeper. So even four foot. So even if you ended up with a two by two foot by four foot, wouldn't be a bad size. Though I can get a little longer wood in the box, and it's more convenient, you know, if it fits in there without too much manipulating. You know, can kind of dump it in. But my stove will hold, I think, up to like 30 inches long. So yeah, maybe 26, somewhere in there. You know, it depends on the wood. You know, really, that's what happens is when you do something like this, I do what I can with the wood that I have. But, you know, like the sled has got a curve up in the front. Well, that's nothing. Though I do like that the sled has got this scallop cut out here, and I'm going to do that in the wood box, too. But my idea here is to build this. It's going to be heavy, you know. <laughs> But I'm building it in, well, actually four sections. There'll be a base section, which will keep it slightly elevated off the floor. Uh, things sit better that way, and there's another reasoning behind this, but if they're right on the floor, it's a problem. So elevate it slightly off the floor with the base. Then there'll be the floor. Then there'll be the middle part, which will just be a, a rectangular 10 by, you know, it'll fit down inside of the base. Then the top portion that's got the slant on the sides, you know, there'll be a, a slant coming down. That will fit over that middle section. So those three parts will fit together, and then on the very top, on the back, you know, like I say, it's angled, but I want a shelf on the back because I found this to be really handy. And that's what this one will be for. It's the width of, you know, it's the right size that I can put my kerosene can, because I'm thinking it'd be nice to have, you know, you need a place to, to keep, I've got a little one gallon kerosene can, one of the old metal ones, that are used for refilling the lamps. Well, you need that kind of handy, but you want it in a spot where if a little bit of kerosene spills, it isn't going to hurt. Well, a little kerosene and firewood isn't going to hurt. So I can throw them right on top of this without harming anything. I, I've got it kind of schemed out. I haven't drawn plans out. I don't draw plans out for these things. I just kind of go at it and <sighs> stay flexible is the idea. You know, because uh, like I say, you're kind of dealing with whatever wood you have. And like I mentioned, this wood is quite knotty. So I'm, I always try to work, like say, the middle section is all going to be groove, you know, not tongue and groove. Well, yeah, sort of tongue and groove together. That I'd like to use on ammunition boxes, that kind of a, a joining. Well, you don't want 
a knot or even any wild grain anywhere near there, you know, where you're making those joints, that's got to be pretty straight grain. So you got to kind of pick and choose on the wood. So that really, the wood is really what determines <laughs> what size it'll be. Because I've got a pile of boards to pick from, but I got to be able to find, like say, the sections for those cross pieces with not a lot of knots in. The floor I don't care about, and the back really isn't, you know, the boards that go on the back aren't really fussy. But these boards are plenty long. You know, so I got room to work with. You know, to shuffle things around. Let's see, on the, on the end of this, you can see the, the green is kind of squirrely, and then you've got a, a knot right here. Well, you, you wouldn't want to use that. You got to be able to cut her back to about, well, there's a knot here, so I'm about here. You know, I can play around and work it out, but you got to stay flexible in this kind of thing when you're working with, you know, not commercial grade lumber. I'm just working with wood. But I got some good straight pieces, and the one advantage to this stuff, you know, this is the stuff we cut for firewood, so it was it was standing dead, very dry, very stable. You know, it isn't going to do anything odd, so I just got to make sure and cut the pieces out. But like this particular piece, I decided to use for the back, for the top for that shelf because it's got nice grain on it. You know, I like that when you cut. Well, it's on the curved part of the tree, you know, the part where you're cutting in there. You can get some kind of interesting grain to it. You know, as far as you get in the middle of the tree, it's just a straight grain with a few knots, swirls, you know. But this, you know, when you get on the outside pieces, you end up with some interesting stuff. But I got plenty of wood for it. Got a pile there and a pile there. And, of course, I got more to cut. The snow kind of set me back, but the snow, <laughs> you know, yesterday we had a foot of snow. Now, out in the open, it's almost all gone. You know, it just melted today. It only got up to like 40 degrees, but she just melted like crazy. You know, back in the trees here, it hangs around for a long time. But it, it'll be, you know, two or three days and it'll be gone. But the roads cleared off right away. You know, it just melted. The worst was the paved roads. You know, they had to plow them, but most of the gravel roads, actually, when it's just kind of snow, you're better staying off them if you can. And we're lucky that this happened, you know, like on a weekend or right before a weekend. So you're not dealing with uh, school buses and people trying to get to work because a lot of stuff was shut down yesterday then. Well, because there was just no going anywhere. They, it was noon before they got the paved the road plowed. And it was tough. I could hear him <laughs> playing his Dave. That's quite a ways away, but he was making a racket. But I never even had to go out and plow. I pushed my driveway open. Not that I would have needed to. You know, I used a tractor and just pushed a path. But the idea is if you can get a little bit of ground showing, it just speeds up the melt because now my driveway is completely bare. You know. But like I say, back in here, you know, I could scrape this all off, but you know, well, two or three days is going to be gone anyway, so I'll just live with it. You know, it's not that big of a handicap. <laughs> but I, like I say, I'll be working on this off and on these next few days, and I'm not really sure how I'm going to do this. You know, I don't like doing multi-part things, but yet again, uh, you know, if I have to do it in one long one video, uh, that's a Kind of a bugger, you know, it's just a nuisance to do. So it'll probably be a snippet here, a snippet there, and then maybe in the end I'll lump a bunch of them together and make it into one video. Because it isn't really, you know, if you're trying to explain something or trying to show how something, it doesn't really matter so much what the project is. So the whole sequence of the thing, it, it really doesn't matter. It's the odd little things that you pick up along the way. You know, little techniques and little tips. You know, I think that's more important. Or at least 
that's what I like to emphasize more than you know because if I was going to want to make a wood box in a hurry I could hammer together a wood box in a half hour I'd be done but it, it wouldn't be something I would really like and there would be nothing to really show you so I'll take my time and make it the way I like but like I said it could, it could go on and on you know until they get her done but there'll be little things along the way that you can maybe learn from but I do, ash is nice wood to work with. You know, I was tempted to go with a basswood, which is nice, and that's really nice to work with. But in the end, I decided, you know, the, the salvage firewood would be kind of a nice thing to use for the box. So that's what I'm going at, you know. Yeah. I'll do it that way. I could have done it with oak too, but my God. Well, in the first place, I don't think I have enough of one inch oak. I got a pile of it over there, but I don't think I have enough that's really seasoned and oak can be a, you know, a squirrely thing if it isn't really seasoned, you know, to build something with. And it would be incredibly heavy, but now, like I say, being made out of ash isn't gonna make it any lighter but it will be made in sections. So it can actually be assembled and it'll be held together without any metal fasteners. Because it's something I like to do. I, you know, I always, you know, there are the uses for nails and screws and all that stuff, but usually to me that shows a kind of a lack of planning, you know, Usually, if you really think these things over, there's a way of doing it without using all the metal fasteners. That's a, a better way of doing it. You know, the metal fasteners are kind of a shortcut. Usually, if you think it over carefully, you know, like I said, I don't have plans I'm working from. It's just what I kind of imagined in my mind, which is how I do things. But then, like I say, I remain flexible. I, I can alter these plans. I don't work myself into a corner. I, I take my time and and carefully kind of work it the way I want it. But it'll be it'll be a wood box in the end. I can guarantee that. And it'll hold 24 hours worth of wood. And that's what I'm after.